Hello guys. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate five of the tools that I have created over the years. It's not the full list. I have a few scripts that I have created a long time ago. But I'm going to talk about these five to complete the challenge that was sent by Joe um, a little while back. Um, so I'm going to start with the obvious one. AutoHotKey Toolkit is a tool that I uh, have been developing. Well, well, I would say I have been developing because I'm still fixing a few things. A few days ago, I fixed a few issues that we had. Uh, so I have been coding this particular program for about 10 years now or more. Actually, it's one of my first scripts. Uh, it is very useful to me. Uh, I made it so that I could create hotkeys and hot strings very easily, very quickly. Um, the hotkeys allow me to launch files, folders, websites, or actually run scripts. So I could uh, go ahead and press a hotkey and it runs a full script. As you can see here, there's a whole thing going on that when I press that hotkey, it would just run that script. So uh, it is very convenient, but the, tool, the, the part of the tool that I use the most is the live code. You have seen probably seen me using this many times in which I just pop it open, type some code, hit run, and test it. I don't have to save the file. I don't have to wonder if the file has to be deleted, what the file name is going to be. I don't care about any of that. I just want to test some code. And especially, I want to switch between versions of AutoHotKey and test different types of codes very quickly, especially because I'm helping other people and they might be using V1, um, and I want to see or help them with that. So I need something to test the code really quickly. So this tool has been around for a long, long time. Uh, yeah, from 2010. So this is a very old script and still <laughs> still working. So the, the other tools, they're not really that cool. Um, they are just simply things that I was doing as I was learning. Some of them were for fixing very specific problems that I was having. And I'm just going to demonstrate them um, as we go. The next one that I'm going to talk about is uh, this one here. I created it for a very specific problem I was having. So at some point I had my own business and I had to deal with a lot of cash. And I didn't want to install or get a program that was bloated and big just to calculate some things with cash, uh, like bills. And, and what I did is I just created a very quick script that would only do this. I just have to tell it how many of those bills I had and it would calculate how many there were. So that's all there is to it. And basically, um, if I had, you know, 13 bills of 100, then it would give me the totals and it would just calculate that right away. Um, interestingly enough, uh, this right here, the, the second part is whenever I had 100 bills of those, then I would just say one of those and it would automatically perform the calculations for me. So as you can see, it was a very simple script. It's a very, you know, multiply those and then in the end, add those up and then just save that. And it was just for me to quickly grab some some bills that I was having, and then just put them in, uh, or at least know the total without me having to perform math, uh, you know, with a calculator or something. I didn't want to go, how many of the, these multiply with that? No, no, no. I just say, these are the bills that I have. How much is that? So it was something to just speed up my my day-to-day -day at that time. So I did learn a lot about, <laughs> about text controls. Actually, with this one, I learned about the width. Whenever you create a text control with a specific width, if you give it a value that is longer than what the text control was when you created it you would have this um clipping that happens as you can see here that's something that i learned while developing this tool and then i what i just did is i just calculated okay what is the biggest number that i think i will get and just um, accounted for that at least you know so i just got yeah that's a number that i'm not gonna have in my hands uh like in pure cash so yeah why would i account for that in the end, it worked. It still works, right? So, but it did its job. It did it well, and I learned a lot with it. Um, so then let's go ahead and take a look at the other one. I had, again, part of that same business that I had. I had to deal with a lot of CSV files. And at that time, I created a CSV remapping tool. So basically, you could take a CSV file. So let's get a CSV file here that had whatever columns they had. I could use any, right? But the CSV file would read all the headers from that, and I would convert those headers into a different program. So I, if I wanted to put it onto a different, for example, Shopify, Shopify has a, a, a different set of headers than the file that I'm loading. So what I would like to do is kind of like map them out, ignore some columns if I didn't need that information, and just get the file in the exact same uh, format that I wanted. So I, I'm just simply extracting information from one type of CSV, and converting it, so, so to speak, into a different type of CSV file. So 
Um, if I let me see, and that's the cool thing about this one, I could hand type them. So I could say, I just want the company name, then the URL, and then let's say the city and state. So those are the things that I need. I don't want anything else. And if I had that, I could name it and save it and have it as a preset for later. So basically, I keep track of my presets, but I could do this. I have a book. Those are the, the headings that I want to map it to. I just remap and say, well, company name, what am I going to put in company name? This is the list of the headers from the original CSV file. So I would say, well, company name is this one. URL, well, the URL is going to be their website. The city is going to be city and the state is going to be state. But then I could ignore the other things. So I didn't want other data that the file might contain. I couldn't just ignore it. And before actually saving the file, I could hit preview and see what the table was going to look like before I went ahead and saved it. So if everything looked good to me, like for example, for the URLs, so those look like URLs. Some of them are missing. That's okay. Cities, those look like cities. So say that's look, looking good. I could close this and then save that as a specific file. So it would ask me, hey, where do you want to save it? And it would grab the info from one CSV, put it in a different one with just the headers that I needed for you know, whatever I needed. So basically, a CSV converter, really, is what it was. I learned a lot about how difficult it is to handle columns, uh, tabulated data, especially when you're remapping. If you don't know what you're doing, holy crap, I spent hours on that thing just to get it to do what I was expecting it to do. Um, before I go to grammar dice, which is very, very specific to when I was a, a teacher, I, let me talk about this one. Hot show. This one is deprecated basically because there are way better um, tools that do the same thing it did. Um, but at that time, when I started this script um, a few years back, it was a cool thing to have an on screen display of whatever you were typing or pressing on your keyboard. So it was a good way for me to kind of like display what hotkey I used for something specific. So this is basically, as I mentioned, something that many other tools are out there that do this in a better way. But it was a learning point for me, especially with the fading in and fading out kind of animation for the window, because it does not simply just appear. It, 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 it has a little bit of fade in. It's not too harsh. So you do, it is very fast, but it is there. And that took a lot of time for me to really learn. The next one, I did want to leave it uh, for last because this one is a little bit more specific. It's very, <laughs> I, I have worked in many different fields, actually. and. One of them was as an in English teacher, an English uh, uh, instructor <laughs> So uh, for people here in Dominican Republic. And one of the things that I came up with was, uh, and I was teaching in a, in a very big classroom and stuff like that, so you had to keep them entertained. You didn't have to also only teach stuff. You had to also keep them entertained. One of the things I read about, it was the Grammar Dice game. It was a game, an actual game that you had some dice that you roll them and whatever the dice said that you had to do, that's what you had to do, right? So. You have to come up with sentences using some set of rules that the dice had, and you had to do that. But I didn't have the dice. I couldn't buy it at that time, but I knew how to code. So what I did is that I created a little program that generates a, a kind of like a code that I would tell them what to do with it. So basically, if we do with a minimum here, roll the dice, you have to have five words. You have to write a sentence that has five words. One of them should use the letter G and one of them should use the letter, well, sorry, one of the words, at least one of them should contain um, the letter G and the letter O. So basically, um, I'm telling you, one of the words that you need to formulate in your sentence must have this consonant, this vowel, and I need at least five words for your sentence, right? So that's one of them. That's cool. And you might think that that's a, an, easy, an easy task, but um, once you start thinking about it like yeah what i need i need a word that contains the letter k and the letter a for somebody who is learning english is really difficult to do so that was kind of like a like a um something that kept them interested in whatever we're doing and the cool thing the sentences didn't even have to make sense they just had to come up with two words a sentence that at least contained two words and that one of the words contains the letter k and the letter a and then as we as i was teaching them more and more stuff then I would add to it. I need to add parts, parts of the speech. Well, I need five words. So a sentence that has five words minimum, one of them should contain the letter N and the letter O, and you need to give me an injunction or something like that. And I could keep, yeah, I need a pronoun. Just come up with a pronoun. So from, those, from that sentence, you need a pronoun, you need a letter, and so on. And you get the idea. Once you get to the most complicated part like this, then, uh, yeah, you would need to build a sentence at least three words long, one of the letters, uh, one of the words, P-I, you need a pronoun. You need to use parentheses in that sentences. 
And then now you have to use a past perfect progressive. And that sentence must be in passive. So just try to get that, you know, like it is a very complicated game. Um, but as we were going slowly getting into this point, like they were enjoying themselves. They were laughing a lot because the sentences really didn't make any sense. Um, of course, I cannot ask you to create a sentence that makes sense that has all those rules, um, or at least not for people who are learning. But this was a very fun tool to create. And it, I learned a lot um, about random things because Part of what it does, and this is the only one that I'm going to show just a little bit of code, part of what it does is for each part of what you're doing down here, whenever I'm getting something, I do create a random number, right? And I get a random letter and so on. And I was doing that, um, and that's when I learned a little bit more about um, randomly selecting something from a list. And of course, the lists are built up here. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this showcase of those five scripts. Most of those tools, I don't really use them that often, except for our hockey toolkit. But uh, I can guarantee that I learned a lot from building those little tools. And it's a good thing that you take a little time, just build little things that make your life just a tiny bit easier. And as you do that, you will be learning very cool stuff.